Hello, fellow patronistas. This week, we're gonna continue with what we started talking about last week. Last week, I didn't give you any videos, but I'm hoping that today's videos will be so informative as to cover up for what we didn't shoot last week. If you're ready, let's hop in. We are moving ahead with our getting started with Python, and this is the fourth in our lessons. The last time we talked about variables and we described them as containers where we store various data values, whether they are integers, floats, or strings. The way we explained them, we were only able to store one value at a time. But in this video, I will show you how to store multiple values under one variable name. And one way to do so, we are going to use lists. In one of our notebooks, getting started with Python 2, we said lists, a list is a collection that is ordered and changeable. And it is usually designated using square brackets. Now, here we have examples of lists. Here we have a list of variable names. We we'll call this one the first list. The next variable name is the second list. The third one is called the third list and the fourth is called the fourth list. The first list, so we stored five variables in it and they're all strings. You can see the quotation marks here. The quotation marks here make them strings because we surrounded them with quotation marks. Then the next variable name is called second list. And there are numbers and no quotation marks around them, meaning that they are integers because there's no decimal place, nothing, just plain numbers. They're called integers. Then the third list, the variable name called third list contains a list of floating point numbers, floats, because they have decimal points. So just right. whether you put it 20 dot nothing or 10 dot five, there are 14 points. As soon as Python registers this number, it's gonna store it as a float and it will add a zero for you. You could add a zero if you wanted to, you could leave it as plain as I left this. These are different ways you could store floats and variable names. And since we want more than one data item, we have to use something like a list. We could also use a dictionary or a set. But in this video, we're only going to concentrate on talking about lists. And then the fourth one here is a mixture of strings. You can see the quotation marks here. You can either use double quotes or single quotes. So this is a number, but as long as it has the quotation marks surrounding it, Python is gonna read that as a string. This one here has no decimal points. The number has no quotation marks. This must be an integer like this. And then this one has no quotation marks. However, it has the decimal point here. Then this is considered a float. To retrieve an element in a list, this apple here is an element. This orange is an element. To retrieve it, we use something called the index operator. Um, we also use the square bracket. I'm hoping that this will not confuse you when you're working with it. If you're creating a list, you need a square bracket to create it. And if you want to access any element on that list, you also use an index operator, which is also a square bracket. Do not get confused as we move ahead. So we've just created a list here of fruits, different fruits, and we aptly named it fruit list. And we assigned the contents of that list into that variable name, 
that we call a fruit list. Remember, a variable name is like a container, and we want to store all these items in this container. Now, if you want to access the first item, the little issue we might have is that Python indexes from zero, not from one. So when we're indexing anything in Python, we start counting from zero. So this apple is on index zero, index one, two, three, four, five, six. The index is like an address that tells Python where any element or item has been stored at. So if you, if you are talking to Python and you want to tell it where to retrieve an element here called Apple, because it is the first on your left, it is located at index zero. The next element from the left, the second element from the left is located at index one, index two, index three, index four, index five, and index six. Even though, as you can see here, there are actually seven elements or items on this list. But because we're indexing from zero, the last item will not be index seven, but index six, which means one less than the total number of elements on that list. Like I said, to access the first item on our list here, we use the index zero. This is the, this is the index operator, which I told you about. It is a square bracket, so we just put zero in it. And when we type it, it gives us apple. To get the third element, we use index two. Remember, we start counting our index from zero. So the third element, would be one less than three, which is index two. The seventh element would be one less than seven, which is index six. So for us here now to access this item, which is the third element, we use index two. The next thing we'll be talking about is called slicing. The difference between slicing and indexing is for indexing, you want to only get one item on your list. But for slicing, you want to get more than one, from two, three, four, five. You can use slicing to get one, but it is just faster to just use indexing. The same thing, we use the same index elements. Here is how it is. You have a variable name called my list. If you have a variable name called my list, you want to, you want to use the index operator again, but this time around, you put two different numbers there separated by a colon. This is a colon. The idea here being that I want to slice my, my list starting from this index and ending at a certain index. So let's assume that here, our list that we created here initially, we want to slice it from the second element to the element next to the last one, just before the last one. So from index one, remember the first one is index zero, from index one to index five, which is the sixth element. So from the second element to the sixth element, excluding the first element and the seventh element. We don't want to see this. We just want to see all these guys in the middle. How do we go about it? We have a formula. We write the name of our variable name, which we have been using, fruit list. We now do the start. We want it to begin from the second element, which is on index one. And we want it to end at the last element. However, what Python would do, it would only print only those elements before the last one. The last item is found on index six. It is not going to display the last element. That is how Python does it. So it excludes the last one here. So this is start, end. When you impute these two numbers, 
Python is only going to pick the first number, slice it. When it gets to this last number, it will not display this number that is at the end or this item that is at the end. So when we run this cell here, you would notice that it prints everything out except the very first item on our initial list and the last item on our initial list. And those items were apple and grape. When we did our slicing, apple was not included on this list. Grape, the last item, was not included in this list. Let's talk about mathematical operations. Let's assume we have a new variable name called new numbers. And here we have a set of numbers kept in a list form. We have two, we have 45, we have 34.2, which is a float, and 16 point nothing, which is also a float. And we want to carry out some mathematical operations on it. Same thing, we now use the index operator to select the number we want to use for the mathematical operation. So here we call it a new variable. And this index one tells us we are trying to access the second element on our list. We want to raise it by a certain power. We want to raise it to the first number or the, or the first element on our list. This is going to be 45 raised to the power two. So we write it thus, the name of our variable is number to access the element we want, which is 45, we use the index operator and put the index location, which is one. And then we raise it by this one. We said we write the same variable name numbers and then raise it by the first element, which is two. The first element is located around index zero. So I decided to do the mathematical operation manually for you to see that we have the same number, 2025, 2025. I hope this video explains a lot to you. If you have any questions, please ask it in the forum. I'm glad to be of help. Thank you and happy coding. Ciao.